Maybe that's just called modeling periodic phenomena. Okay, um, a big concept in that is that whatever you can do, you can do the opposite of. So what we're doing today is the opposite of graphing. I'm going, to keep, I'm going to give you a graph and I'm going to make an equation. Okay, so before I gave you the equation, you made the graph. Then I'm going to give you a graph to make the equation. That's the opposite. So example one is going to say, actually the thing I'm going to say is, um, this is making uh, equations given a periodic graph. Um, so this is where, unfortunately, when my wife was having a first baby, I told her to go to work. And I was doing it for a longer, I felt her. It was a beautiful periodic motion to her pain. And I said, baby, you just give me a question for a final exam. That's a true story, actually. That really happened. And yes, I still have to bruise for what happened. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so make an equation of periodic graph. Um, what I'm going to say is, Hints are going to be number one is going to say, um, always draw a sketch. Number two, I'm going to say, um, use a cosine graph. Why might it be easier to use a cosine graph than use a complexion? Go. Very good. Okay, so cosine graph, we're going to stand and say um, we are always given the max. And the third thing I'm going to remind you that, um, what was my, the K value? I'm sorry, I'll try this again. What is the period of an equation? The period is going to be 360 over K. From that, Using your great algebra skills, what's k going to equal then? Three sixty over your period. Okay. okay, so again, we're just going to work in the opposite of what we did. So we're going to find, we're going to calculate the axis. We're going to calculate the cal calculate the axis, the amplitude, the, the period, the phase shift, all that stuff, and put it back in the equation. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Example one. Uh, so one is very nice when we move on to more awesome ones. Example one. Um, model this with cosine. Okay, here's my graphs. If you're looking for what the points are going to be, these are what the points are supposed to be. I'll write them down here. Yes. No, you should always use cosine. The textbook uses um, the term um, sinusoidal function. You can still use cosine for that. Remember we said sine and cosine the same, there's just a 90 degree shift, a joint shift. So cosine we all use because it's very, very easy to find the max. Um, if you're given real life data, it's very rare that you'll find a point exactly on the axis, right? On these beautiful textbook questions, it's very easy. Like this first example is simple, right? So this is too bad. So step one, I'm going to draw this as a rough graph here. Now these graphs do not have to be works of art, okay? If I say formally graph, then yes, they should be. When I'm looking to make an equation, I'm just going to get my data down on paper here. Every math teacher who's watching this video now is just what's in the TV. All right. I mean, you can see this. I mean, if anyone's actually going to read this, they're like, all right, but that's okay. Um, three six nine twelve. I should say I showed this to Ava. Okay, 
Let's get some points drawn out here. Negative 60 and 9 is going to be something like this. Uh, negative 30 and 6 is going to be here. 0 and 3 is going to be here. 30 and 6 is going to be here. 60 and 9 is going to be here. And 19 and 6 is going to be here. So my graph is going to look something like that. So again, that's just a rough little sketch. We can start to not take a huge amount of time, but there's a lot of use to see stuff using the graph than it is just with the data that's on there. Any questions on the graph? Those are far too polite. Well, the graph's good. Okay. Let's start actually trying to get some information from here. Um, let's start with Jake. Jake. Start with the axis. Do you recall how we find it? Let's talk about what the axis is for how we find it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the middle of the graph up and down. Okay. So you can probably see what it is. And that's the equation. Let's yeah, max plus min over two. And again, this one you can probably eyeball. When I say probably, I mean definitely. Okay. Because if I'm looking at this graph, this is going to be the axis. I can tell that. Right? Just looking at that, there's my axis. But when we get to more complicated examples, we should use the equation. Uh, Jake, you're not done yet. What's the max value on this graph? What's the min? 9 plus 3 over 2, which is 12 over 2, which is 6. Now, notice that value of 6 conveniently match my eyeball method of the answer. Okay, like I eyeballed that there was 6, and that's actually what the, I confirmed there. Narcisse, you're going to do the amplitude for me, please. What is the amplitude in English? Sort of. You said the highest point, not really. Okay. So you want to help us here? It is max plus minus two's equation. But for the amplitude, it's going to be from here to the top. Okay. And then from there, it is going to be straight. You can get that just from eyeballing again here. But I'm actually going to show you how we get that. As Joe correctly said, this is max minus amplitude. And as we get to more complicated questions, it's a lot easier to use the equation. And we're too nearly where it is to be free. Yeah, how are we feeling? Okay, William. You're the next superstar. What is the period of this graph going to be? Or what's the period mean in English to start with that? And we'll get to what it actually means. We're starting a full cycle. Very good. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the period, I'm just going to draw it on here. The period is going to go from here to here. If you remember when we first did this, um, or when we should have done this online, the period is from the max to the max. That's what the distance is going to be. So, how are we going to measure that? What is the period going to be? So it's going to be from max to max. It is going to be 120 degrees. So it's going to be 16 minus negative 60 uh, equals 120 degrees. That's the period in this graph. Okay. Now, Lucy, you remember the next victim? No. Okay. So what I'm going to find next is our k value for my equations. Uh, no, we'll just shift next. Maybe. Okay, now for the shift, Lucy, where does cosine start at for the shift? Where does cosine start at? Okay, uh, cosine starts for the shift. Uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So let me help you here. Where does cosine start at in general? Your maximum point. Okay. So I'm going to call the shift is going to be the difference from shift is from zero. To your first max. It doesn't matter. Right? As long as you get to a max. Now again, this is what um, Jared was saying before. It can work either way. I'm going to say in this case, this is going to be 60 degrees for us. Just because I always go to the right, that's why I always put it in my equation. You go to the left, this is the one. Finally, I'm going to ask Arden for my k value, because I didn't put my k value yet. Remember what k value was for the previous page? Oh. 
spontaneous 360 over the period, which was 360 over 120, which equals three. Okay. This is their code I know the first time through. You guys can do this one. Now we need to actually make an equation. Can I get anyone to be brave here? I'm not going to pick on anyone in this case. I want Amy to be brave right now. What is the equation for this going to be? Okay. And if you need me to write in where she got that from, this is your amp. This is your K value. This is your shift. And this is your axis. 